Greetings, dear ones, I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. The group has practiced a coherence. And each time that occurs in a meeting of this kind, it opens the channeling for greater subjects of love. The question was given, can a group help the coherence of one that sits before it who is not a coherent? And the answer is yes. If you can extend this whole idea of coherence, I'll tell you that although it would appear to be a linear process, it's bigger than you think. Imagine for a moment if you have enough people in coherence that is thinking about the same thing. Coherence as defined by the scientific measurement of coherence that you just went through. If you have enough people, it's almost like you have a radio broadcasting station and suddenly it goes way beyond what you think. Now this particular action that I have just given you of coherence creating a greater coherence almost like broadcasting it hasn't really been measured for that where one group goes into coherence and there's a measurement somewhere else of someone else but what has been measured was the effect of many when you start having focused coherence and you start to see that others fall into the coherence far easier because of those next to them. This is a premise, dear ones, that we have given you in the metaphysics that says that balance broadcasts balance. When you have one balanced individual in a group of those who are not or amongst chaos it's not just one among many it's almost like balance has light in a dark place people begin to feel the one that is balanced and their balance then creates other balance many times it, it creates it without conversation and you start to see the power of this synchronicity that we have called coherence. It's only one attribute of many that's starting to occur on this planet. We told you about another one. We said that light begets light and that means light actually creates light in a way that you're not aware of and this is not explainable to you if you look at the linearity of a light worker creating light in a dark place what you start to see is that light is not in a box light goes everywhere and even in a dark room or a black room if one lights a match everyone can see a little so it doesn't just benefit the one who lit the match then others light a match because they see the one who has lit it is is blossoming and they can see and so others light it and pretty soon more and more can see and we've said this so many times in 30 years but when you can see one another that you're not afraid of each other The fear that has happened on this planet has been those who, who can't see the other one. Who, who will surround the wagons, as they say, and protect your assets and your resources because you don't know about the other culture or the other society or even your neighbor. But when you can see them 
and you can see that you're all the same in certain ways and that even perhaps you worship the same the same beautiful creator maybe in different ways but you can see that then you start to relax what would happen if you had that kind of coherence on the planet even marginally where you started to see one another and the room that is the whole earth started to be illuminated just so you can see each other better what would it be like and the answer is it's already started did you realize that that invention of what you call the internet seems to correspond with all of the things we began to tell you about including the 1989 arrival of cryon that the internet dear ones has allowed so many people on this planet to see you and you see them that the media that you watch on a regular basis if you shoot if you choose to do this and the videos that are often there as you say posted are about everyday life about watching cultures love one another that's different there are those who say well this whole technology is not not really does doesn't really do much it actually takes away from from socialization perhaps individuals with individuals and you're not getting the bigger picture for the first time on the planet cultures are looking at each other instead of listening to their leaders on who they should fear or not Young people, especially all over the world, are starting to see other young people beginning to realize they're not as they were told. Where you can tune in to country after country after country. And you start to see something and you get a coherence of understanding. What would happen if you dedicated a day or two to just understanding one another and you called it understanding day well the whole idea was that you put yourself in a place of compassionate understanding of who they are and why they do what they do and, and if you did what you'd see dear ones is that you're all the same and if in that moment you could then poll every human and ask them this question do you want a war <laughs> what do you think the answer would be that's correct they'd all say no overwhelmingly overwhelmingly and then you'd start to understand the dysfunction of what war does and how a few can affect the many and how the powerful can override those who are not and you start to realize what the media gives you that you call the net it lets you see into the hearts of those you never knew before it's an example dear ones of technology for its time it's an example that perhaps not all technology is bad that a balance is needed of technology and heart of humans balanced with the tools that you have of a time it's all part of an evolvement of humanity using the tools at hand and more is coming in this group questions have been answered but other questions haven't even been asked and one of the questions that has not been asked out loud is what's the fast track to enlightenment and here's the answer 
the ability to sit down and be loved. The ability to sit down and be loved. This is a channel that I have given many times in different ways. And it speaks of all of the history of life that you have. And it starts with the mother and those early days that many of you can't really remember of being cuddled and held and loved and taken care of and there was nothing like it nothing like it and all the chemistry was there you don't have to be smart or intelligent to evolve dear ones to understand love you just don't you don't have to be an intellectual to be loved you just don't that same care and that same love is pouring at you right now, right now from the creative source pouring at you and there's a shield that keeps it bounces right off this shield it keeps it from affecting you and that shield you can give it many names if you want to you can call it lack of belief. You can call it fear of change. It has so many names, that shield. You can call it intellectual metaphysics. Where you will have someone that is so involved in metaphysics and energy. And they're unhappy. Because their shields are up against the love of God. Because they're so intellectual and so involved in all the energy and all the things that they they believe in, that they actually push away people. Someone will come up to them and say, "Well, how are you?" And they'll give them some intellectual, metaphysical answer that pushes them away. Because they don't know how to be loved. Isn't it time to stop that shield or recognize what it is and just drop it? Even for a moment or two, can you forget everything you were taught just for a minute that's right or wrong or black and white and just sit there? The shields will come dropping down because for a moment you're neutral and in comes the love of God and starts the lesson. This is what compassion is like. This is what love is like. Emulate it. Be it. And then you start understanding how to arrange your belief. How to arrange your metaphysics, if you wish. How to react to energy. How many of you are told you had to build a shield around yourself to keep certain things from happening? Well, I'll tell you what it's done. It keeps you from being loved because you got a shield. You think you're shielding the darkness. You're shielding everything, including balance. Did you know that? Do you feel that? There are so many, even in this, this listening group of, of how many, now and later, that still don't understand, truly. Still don't understand it how to sit and be loved. They worry even about their own belief system. They worry about dark energy. All of these things, many of them actually made up <laughs> to help them worry because it's a habit. If you can sit there and be loved just for a moment, everything starts to snap into balance it can rewrite your program of what you think is important if you allow it and we've said this before this is the gold if you want to know enlightenment and you want to know where the gold is 
of love and enlightenment and truth, sit and be loved. The masters who walked this planet had a lot of, of followers. And while they walked the planet, all of the followers would get together and decide what it meant and what they did. What rules should be built around their lives and what they taught. But the one rule is quite often missed. Emulate them. That's what that's what they were here for. When they would do miraculous things and talk about love, emulate that. They personified love. Emulate it. And now you have the same thing right now today. Only today it's different. The energy of this planet is shifting. We are asking each one of you to take a mantle of, of a kind of mastery, if you wish, where you can emulate the Creator with your consciousness and your higher self in integration, where you can stand up and be peaceful, and people will be attracted to you, and you're not going to give them a doctrine. You're going to give them love. <laughs> what a concept. What a concept. You're going to give them compassion, and that's infectious. It's healing. There are those who will simply walk with you, and disease can leave their body because you're balanced and you're broadcasting it to those next to you. Then they'll ask you, what happened? And you can say, it's all about balance. It's all about compassion. And you can tell them what you've experienced. And you don't have to give them a cryon book. Just tell them about you. What's experienced with you? That's what's infectious about light. Light creates light. So many of you know and have seen what laughter can do and how it actually creates laughter. In a group, one person laughing for a long time will create all of them laughing. That's what we're talking about. That's light. That's the beautiful part of compassion and joy. It's not in a box. It escapes so quickly, and it's beautiful. Have you ever examined your own balance? There are those light workers who chase away others because they are so aggressive with their unusualness. It may be truth, but it's unusual to the public. And when you say to them, "Do you are you aware that you're so unusual you chase away people?" And they will say, "Yes, that's my task. I have to be unusual to hold the energy of this planet." Well, I want to tell you something while you're one person holding the energy of the planet, you got about a thousand who are getting joyful and spreading light. Once you join the light, and I'll tell you what happens, you're going to hold the energy of the planet tenfold with some joy and some balance. Gone are the days where you have to be strange to say, I believe in metaphysics. Or strange when you say, I believe in energies. And in comes the day where balance is the key. Balance is the key. Let somebody ask you what you're into and you can tell them gently, I believe in, in beautiful energies around me. I believe in angels. I believe in these kinds of things. I, I, I speak to those around me that, that perhaps you don't. And if you do it in balance and love, they're going to say, tell me more. They're not going to run the other way. That's the difference today. Light worker, old soul, that's the difference. My partner has, has had to say these things now over and over and change them, and rearrange them to come to this point where he addresses those in a belief system that often seem to be odd and weird and strange and say, it's time to change. You can take the truth of the energy that you've carried all these years and balance it up and be beautiful to the planet.
beautiful. People will be attracted to your love and compassion and your balance. And you won't be strange or weird. Any more than the masters were strange or weird. And when they taught and when they did their work and when they sat around and spoke, nobody ran the other way. All you wanted to do was get a little closer and listen a little more because their words were kind and soft and beautiful and wise and healing. And that's you. Welcome to a new age, a real new age. Not an evangelistic point of view, but one where light is attractive and compassion even more attractive and that's why you're here this message has been brought to you by all the angels in the room the entourage in the room and the ones that are cheering in a stadium right now that says right on now go do it you have got help the wind is at your back now go do it. This is the message of crime. Always will be. Always will be. And so it is.